inheritance, my mother took all of my money from my sister because she was a golden child and had to be fed. They can't believe they're going to sue them now. She's 23 years old. There was a lot of money left by 18F grandma when she died eight years ago. She left enough money to pay for all her grandkids' college educations with a few rules, don't get arrested, drink, do drugs, or get pregnant. A bank account was set up for each of the parents with the money, since we were all little kids. Finally, when I was in high school, my sister dropped out. If the fan is worried about going to college, her baby daddy might have moved away and she hasn't tried to find him or get child support from him yet. Pregnancy was hard because of the stress caused by that is fine for both of them. Mom and dad still let her go to college. Unless she had another and had a 3.5 GPA, which she did. This December, she got her diploma. She owes about two grand. Her money must have been used to raise her child and pay for her pregnancy over the last 2.5 years. I thought that was the case. So she had to get a loan, which made sense. I was way off. A long way away from home, I was accepted to my dream college. My mom kept trying to persuade me that I should go to a one-year home instead. So, I don't need a dorm room. And it would be cheaper to go to school there as well. Her answer surprised me, so I asked her why. Grandma had a lot of money. That's what I thought. Instead, they flushed all the money that was supposed to be for me down the toilet so that they could pay for my sister's expensive pregnancy. It was worse than I thought. As I was crying more than I ever have, I broke down and started crying even more. How they come over and mess with my life with a kid. A lot, at least 70k, is going to happen if I go to school now. I think this is going to bother my sister. A very angry tone of ID came out of her. She asked if she would rather be on the streets alone and unable to care for her child because she didn't have an education or support system, so I could go to college and have a good life. I agreed. She should not have been able to get drunk and sleep with so many men. She doesn't know who the father is. My mom and dad were breaking rules all the time, but I haven't had sex with my boyfriend. In the one that has to be punished for a dot, things just kept getting worse until I left. I've been living with my boyfriend for the last few days. Because of Rona, I know I shouldn't go anywhere but I just wanted to be with the one person I think cares about me. Mom has been texting, calling, and trying to get me to come home. She says that if I can just be reasonable and stop blaming my sister, we can probably work something out. Grandma left for me unless she has money. Don't talk to me until I pay off my college loans in 50 years. I went to. A lot of it was driven by emotions. But I feel like I'm being punished even though I was the one who did the right thing. I no longer have a boyfriend. As long as I get punished as if I had broken all the rules, I think I can still have fun. This morning I've been texting system to see if we can get some men's things together because I didn't think that mom and dad spending the money was her fault. She found out about it after she graduated and was asked to keep me in the group, too. As far as I know, she's willing to pay for a book or two, but not more because she wants to move out of her parents' house so that she can party again. She doesn't hide how much she misses it. To get her a car, they decide to use the money. She'd be able to get to work. She agreed to it. This is the third time I've done this. It is my copy of the will. As it stands now, he can't be sure that we have a case because of how it was set up. The lawyer says they may have broken the trust. Set up by Grandma, so he's going to ask a trust lawyer, a friend of his, to help him read it. Okay. He made five holy, so many changes. Sorry. She called me back. She didn't like her parents, so she was angry with them. When she called to find out what was going on, all they did was listen to her, try to show why. There was a good reason why dad and mom agreed to pay for both an abortion and assist in one. I would, but we still wouldn't always get what we want. And sis didn't want to get help from the government because they thought it was bad. They thought this was the only way to keep her safe. She says they still have Aaron. Mom told her to shed, do it again. And she had to start over. Obviously, they're mad at me for telling people, but since it's just making people mad at the MIM, they're just laughing at this point story. This is how it works. Is having a crush on someone at work bad? For the last three years, I've been in a relationship that I love very much. I know it will be over soon. For some reason, I can't stand the guilt. There has never been anything like this before. I didn't think I could look at other men. All of me loves my boyfriend. How can I figure out if there's something I need to work on with myself, my release? In my mind, I know I have low self-esteem and a problem with codependency. If I worked on these problems, I would stop welcoming people into my life. There's nothing wrong with my boyfriend. He's the best friend I have. I like him very much, too. 
When you're in a relationship you don't like, it can be normal to have feelings for someone else, even if you don't like them. In the past, a person had worked as a normal person. He's just nice to me because he's a nice person. A lot of recently, I have been working hard to make my boyfriend feel loved. He seems happy, and that makes me happy, so I am too. You know he's all I want. If I gave him any advice on how to stop being attracted to the person at work, I would never hurt him. In my next job or anywhere else, I don't want this. Just to see my boyfriend. I want my boyfriend to feel safe. Never have to worry about this. TLDR. I feel very bad for liking someone at work, even though I'm not doing anything about it. So I don't know what's wrong with me. No, I don't think so. 23M didn't want to keep trying to have a relationship with my friend 27F. In the beginning, I'll just say that I've never been in a relationship and get very nervous about them. The goal is for me to learn and not make the same mistakes I've made in the past. So if I'm being dumb, please tell me, because this is a good thing for me to do. A lot of people help me out, but I also want an unbiased opinion from someone who doesn't know me very well. He is a coworker from my weekend job, and we've worked together for a while now. My friend and I worked very well together and we talk a lot, even though I didn't start. Some time ago, she asked me to help her with some research because it was a field I knew something about. So she came to work with me to help us keep our job quiet and not very busy. When she asked me for help, I gave her my email address, I could help her even more when I wasn't at the office. Memes and YouTube links and other things I thought she might like were sent to her with her permission. This went on for about three weeks. When we first started texting, it was every day for two weeks. In the six months since then, we have texted each other every week, usually multiple times a week. She works 12-13 hours, five days a week, with a mix of day and night shifts. So I don't expect her to text me all the time and be very quick to answer. That's just not fair. Then, as I said, she also goes to school, which is what she does. So as I said above, feel free to tell me if I'm being unreasonable or just plain dumb. Afterward, I'm here to learn, not to worry. There was a start. There were a lot of times when she didn't start the conversation, and I would have to start them. She has done this a few times, but not often. If I start talking to her, she usually replies. However, the amount of time she takes to respond, as I said above, I don't expect quick responses, and I don't mind waiting a while for them to come. Isn't always the same for two days. You'd be lucky to get more than a few sentences out of her for a whole week. During other times, she will answer right away and have long conversations with me where the longest I have to wait is a minute or two. When it comes to getting back to me, all of my other friends are way behind me. It's also possible that when I send her a meme or something, she'll just read it. This makes me question what she's reading. Her emails were the same way. My friend had also sent me a YouTube video that had no response, so I didn't send anything for two weeks. When I saw her again, the first thing she said to me was how funny they were as well as our conversation in person. They are very good. To me, it seems like the hours go by in a flash. We also have a lot of... The weekend job was the place I went to see her when I had time off from work. For an hour and a half, I had her attention. Then, I had to leave. She told me about her favorite music, tastes, and dark sense of humor, and I got to hear it. She tells me that she likes to hide these things because she thinks they aren't good socially. Often, I've had to persuade her because she doesn't want me to think bad of her or be scared. Texting has become a lot easier now that we are texting each other. She now has an extra dimension. Her night shifts usually make her want to text me. She usually doesn't because I'm not awake or because she thought I might be offended by it or something like that. The last time I saw her, she talked about this. In the middle of nowhere, I told her I was going to walk for 24 hours for charity. In the beginning, she asked if I was a receptionist. She told me that she would be on night shift and that she wanted me to text her all night. I did that. I've also said on another occasion that I'd be up late and available to text if she wanted to text me on one of her night shifts if she wanted to. It's true. She texted me at midnight. Before, you told me to ask her out. I've done this three times. In fact, the first time she said yes, but didn't know for sure that her shifts had agreed. So, she didn't know when she could do that. The second time was almost the same as the first. But this time, she said she'd be free the next week. Then, though, I got hurt and couldn't move at all. I've since recovered and asked a third time. This time, she said she was afraid to make plans because of work and family events. Given how long I've known her, she may be giving me the finger. If you know her, 
you know that she doesn't make excuses or run around the bush. Because she told me it looks like her friends aren't very close to her. Then, she says I'm one of the few people she is outside of her family. Even though I'm new to this and I'm trying to learn, I'm also the only male outside of my family. The TL doctor, I might be making myself look bad and overanalyze too much. As long as you give me an honest assessment of my chances with another person, I don't care what you say.